All right, happy uh, Saturday, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Pat Callan here on KHOU 11 Plus. Every night we do the APM tropical weather update, and we've got two things that we want to focus on. One is a brand new tropical storm, which isn't really going to impact anybody, and the other is a tropical wave that's moving towards the Caribbean. So here's the map. It's a lot quieter and a lot less congested than it was, you know, a couple of days ago when we had like three or four features on here. Uh, Aaron is gone, so that's no longer going to be in the headlines, but now we've got a new tropical storm. It's pronounced Fernand. It's a French name. So this storm is going to move uh, out to sea as we go through the next few days. Again, not going to be an issue, but it's this wave down here that we'll keep an eye on, especially as it begins to drift westward into the Caribbean. First, the latest on Tropical Storm Fernand as of the 4 p.m. advisory. There's Bermuda. It's a couple hundred miles to the south and east. Winds at 40 miles an hour, moving north at 15. It'll continue that northward movement and then eventually bend away from the U.S. and from North America as we get towards the middle of the week. Should maintain tropical storm status the entire time, but again, that's not going to be an issue for anyone. This wave down here, though, which has looked a lot healthier in the last few hours uh, in the Western Atlantic, that is what we're going to keep a very close eye on here as we go through the next few days. In fact, it's looking so healthy right now that the National Hurricane Center had dropped the odds of development to 20%. Now they're back up to 40% just based on what things are looking like. So in the Atlantic, there's a large area of high pressure. It's in the central and the eastern Atlantic. That's basically the big steering mechanism uh, this time of year for any tropical systems that try to develop. So this high is going to nudge this wave eventually into the Caribbean. I've got it highlighted there. Now what happens as we get into the middle of the week is the wild card. Right now, this model does not really develop this system. In fact, it looks kind of ragged here as we get into Tuesday. So the question will become, does it actually develop into anything? Does it keep moving farther to the west or does it actually take that northward track into the Gulf? So three questions that have to be answered. Does it even form? And then if it forms, does it go west into Central America or does it take that north hook into the Gulf? And obviously, all eyes would be on it at that point. So this will be an area that we watch here over the next few days. Remember, we're only taking this out to Tuesday. So we're only three days away from this being in the Central uh, Caribbean. Here's the latest though from both of our large scale global computer models, the American, the, Europe, uh, the European. We talk about these models all the time, especially during hurricane season. Notice, we don't see anything on the map here over the next five days. So neither model develops a strong system for now. That could change though. I will say, as a word of caution, all of the models have been underdoing this system. It's not even a system, this tropical wave. You know, a lot of the models by this point had just kind of dissipated this wave. Not only is that not the case, but it's looking healthier this evening than it has in the last few days, which is why they've bumped those odds for development back up. Now let's talk about the limiting factors. What's going to hold this system back as it crosses the Antilles into the Caribbean? First and foremost, there's a lot of dry, dusty air out here. So the little bit of the bend in the wind streams here, that's where the wave is. This is why we call it a tropical wave. It's a wave in the, in the wind flow out here in the Caribbean, or rather in the Western Atlantic. To the north of this system, there's a lot of Saharan dust traveling around the base of this area of high pressure. That dust, if it gets ingested into that wave, it's really going to choke off any development potential, <clears throat> at least in the near term. On top of that, we've got a little bit of easterly wind shear. Again, same place as that dust along the base of that high. I will say the shear drops off quite a bit as you go farther south. So I don't think shear is going to be a huge issue for the system, especially if it travels on the southern end of this envelope. Uh, but those two factors will be something to watch here as we go through the next few days. So here's the latest on this wave. As of 7 p.m., winds are at 40 miles per hour, uh, and it is crank it along here. It's moving to the west at just over 25 miles per hour. So this thing is racing. That's another thing that's going to limit its development is just how fast it's moving. This thing is going to have to slow down. It's going to have to get into an environment with less wind shear and into an environment with less Saharan dust. That said, all of our computer models do take it westward. Now, where does it go from there? Again, if this develops, some of our models actually cut off to the south of Jamaica, indicating that there's no development at all. Other models, though, do try to develop something, and they take it farther south into Central America. There are a couple of models, and this is a new run 
of spaghetti plots, which again are just each line represents a different computer forecast simulation. Now there are three that take this northward towards the Yucatan. A couple of hours ago there were only two. So now we've got a couple more models kind of sniffing out that possibility. So I think we have three legitimate outcomes here. One is that the system falls apart. The other is that the system goes into Central America. And finally, the third is that the system develops and then eventually tries to make a run into the Gulf. It's too early to tell right now, but that's why we're going to keep a very close eye on this system as we get into the uh, next few days. And it's a good reminder that we're getting close to the peak of hurricane season. Today's August 23rd, peak of the season, three weeks away. So climatologically, or historically speaking, we are in the most active part of hurricane season. Two-thirds of all tropical activity uh, develops between now and like mid-October. So we're pretty much in the heart of it. It's definitely a time for you and your family to be on top of things. Check back with the forecast daily. We're going to have updates on this wave as it tries to develop over the next few days. And again, we're doing these updates every single day here on KHOU 11 Plus at 8 p.m. We'll have an update on the forecast coming up tonight. 